Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the tips and tricks video on the Samsung J5 and the J7 series and probably the J3 series. All the three phones have the same tips and tricks so that's why this is going to be the same video for all the three devices. So anyway guys, for the demonstration I'm going to use the J5 and this is how the lock screen on the device looks. I'll be starting off with some basic tips and tricks going on with some pretty interesting and advanced stuff. So they are not arranged based on importance so just so simply browse through the video, just skip the things that you already know and know about the things that you don't know. So anyway guys, let me just start off with the things on the lock screen. So this is how the lock screen on your J5 or J7 or the J3 looks like. And on the left, we have the shortcut for phone dialer. On the right, we have a shortcut for the camera. So if you want to quickly open the phone dialer, simply swipe it like that. And it will open the phone dialer. Usually it opens a phone dialer but if you have multiple phone dialers, it will ask you to choose the default one. So let me go with the stock phone dialer. Let me do that once again. And there you have it. Now to quickly open the camera, we can simply swipe it from the right like that to open the camera app. Now you can swipe up to unlock the device or else you can simply swipe down to check out the notifications. You can swipe down once again to access the notification toggles. In the security settings you can choose to display the notifications or the notification toggles. So I'll show you that later. So for now these are all the things that you can do on your lock screen. Even when your device is locked you can simply double press the home button to quickly open the camera app. As you can see, we have now opened the camera app with just double clicking the home button without unlocking the device. We can do it even when your device is locked with a password or a pin, but when the device is locked, you won't be able to see your previous images. So that's something really nice. This is how the stock touchface home screen looks like. So I've just removed the widgets and added few shortcuts. So anyway, these are the tricks that you can do with the home launcher. So simply press and hold on the home screen and you will get additional options. If you go to wallpaper you get the option to change the wallpaper of the home screen but on the top left corner of the screen you get additional options to change the wallpaper of your home screen, lock screen or both home screen and lock screen. So if you want to change the lock screen and home screen wallpapers I can do that. I can choose between any inbuilt wallpapers or I can go to gallery and select one of my images. Now just press and hold. And there you have it. Just click set as wallpaper and it will be applied as the wallpaper. And if you check out the lock screen, even the lock screen wallpaper has been changed now. The next option is to add widgets. So if you just select that, you get the option to add widgets. So these are all the widgets that we have and we can add any one of these. You also have the option to change themes. To change themes you need to first download them and to download them you need to sign into your My Galaxy account or the Samsung account. So these are the themes that I've already downloaded. So just download it and click apply to apply a particular theme. Just give it a second. As you can see the wallpaper has been changed. The icons for the stock applications have been changed. And if you go to the notification area. The toggles background, the toggles color and the icons have been changed. If we go to the settings, even this area has been changed. So this is a material design. If you like it, you can stick with it or else once again you can change the theme. As this device has an AMOLED display, I usually prefer to keep something black. In the app, you have the option to either go with the free themes or you can even buy the themes. So this is the black theme that I've just downloaded and applied and as you can see everything is black or at least grey and it looks really amazing. So anyway that's the themes part and you can change it to whatever you want. Just press and hold the home screen once again and you have the option for screen grid. So you can change the size of the grid from 4x4 to 4x5, 5x5 and I guess that's pretty much it. So if you change the size of the grid or if you simply increase it, the size of the icons reduces. So if your parents or any elderly person with eyesight issues is going to use this phone, just stick with the 4x4 grid. 
so let's go back let me just change the theme to the stock theme so you might not get confused with anything else now this is the app dialer where all your apps are located on the top you have the option to search for applications you simply select that and search for any app that you want to find next you have the option to arrange all the apps in alphabetical order next we have the option to edit the layout so now we can uninstall applications or move these apps from their location to some other location we can even create folders by simply overlapping the applications just like that these are all the things that you can do with the stock app dialer going on next to take a screenshot on this device you need to press the power button and the home button both at the same time just press both of them and it will take a screenshot so it is that simple to do for people who are worried that this is a big phone and their hands are very small we have something called as one handed mode simply press the home button thrice to enable it and there you go this is the one handed mode and you can shift the screen from left to right or right to left and everything in this phone works in the one handed mode you can even take pictures and do whatever you want so none of the functionality is affected because of this one handed mode you can always switch back to the full screen mode by simply clicking on this button let's go back to use the one handed mode by pressing the home button thrice you need to enable an option for that go to settings once you are in home screen scroll down and select advanced features now select one handed operation now make sure you enable the first toggle if you enable the second toggle the keyboard size will shrink this happens only with the stock keyboard app let me just give you a quick demonstration so this is the stock samsung keyboard app and we can simply toggle the side so once again people with small fingers or small hands don't need to worry about the big screen i personally don't use it so i'm just going to disable that for now once again if you don't want to open the camera app by pressing the home button twice just disable this toggle next we have something called as battery modes so on the whole we have two battery modes the normal battery saver and the ultra power battery saving so for that just go to settings and select battery and now you have the power saving mode and the ultra power saving mode if you just go to the power saving mode and enable it it will simply reduce the cpu frequency and disable background data usage if you enable the power saving mode it will simply decrease the performance of the cpu and restrict background data usage but if you are really low on battery then you can switch to ultra power saving mode and once you enable that all the smartphone features of your phone will be completely removed and your phone will become like a normal featured phone you'll have just options for making calls reading messages taking notes and that's pretty much it you won't have access to internet camera or any battery consuming applications as you can see this is how the ultra power saving mode looks and what you're looking is called as grayscale mode so you don't even see colors everything is simply black and white to save battery life let's say you're having 10% of battery life and you switch to ultra power saving mode you can definitely last maybe 7 to 8 hours of battery life once you're in this mode you can still use your phone for basic stuff like making calls messages browsing the internet calculator voice recorder and memo you can even change these shortcuts and that's pretty much it for example we are having 60% of battery and our estimated usage time is approximately 1.7 days so normally this isn't very useful but when you are really low on battery and you don't want your phone to die on you this is definitely a must have feature on every android device but unfortunately all devices doesn't come with ultra power saving mode and all devices don't have a super amoled screen so none of those phones can use this feature this is something that i really like in the samsung devices next we have something called as ultra data saving mode so we can access that from the notification area so it is called ultra data saving so if you use mobile data then just enable this toggle and it can save up to 50% of your mobile data so what basically happens is when you use internet from your mobile data every information let it be a video or a web page get compressed and sent to your phone and on your phone the data gets uncompressed so in this way it usually saves data and most of the time it works 
and you can use Opera Max app for the same functionality on other devices too. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. These are all the tips and tricks and hidden features of Samsung J series phones whether J3, J5 or J7. And I hope you found this video to be helpful and would forgive me for the bad voice. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this. And as always, keep smiling.